All right, guys, just like I promised you, I'm going to go ahead and show you the interior of the monastery here. It's daylight, so it should be helpful for you to get a, an idea of what it looks like um, and where things are located. I'll also pop up the map in this video somewhere, or a link that you can check out the maps and actually see the... Um, layout of each floor and uh, kind of give you a better idea all right so here you see that it's uh, I'm at the uh, breezeway and if you look in those windows down below there that's actually the basement windows down that long hallway in the rooms that are adjacent to that hallway the breezeway here that actually goes to the sacristy, that back door you see back there. That goes to the sacristy. And then the stairs right here are actually the end of the potato cellar. That's in that little room in the back. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. And then we'll head on back to uh, the potato cellar and get into the basement and everything down there. Um, but for right now, let's go ahead and go on in door here you can see a beautiful campus sorry about the wind we'll be inside in a second So as we come in the front doors, as I open up these doors here, you'll see this is the ramp end, obviously. So these are the ramps going up to the um, uh, second, third, and fourth floor. But if we look over here, there's also a ramp going down into the basement. So we're on the north end of the building, and uh, it has ramps, whereas the south end has stairs. But if you look at that sign up there, it says cloister, no admittance. It means no women allowed. So back in the day, the nun, sister, any woman at all were not allowed beyond these doors. So you go down here, and they could go down here. This was not a problem, but this goes down into the basement. We'll probably head into there last. I figured I'd start out on the fourth floor and then take you guys uh, floor by floor back down to the basement save the best for last right <laughs> so as you can see this is the administration part this is the part that uh, the girls run all the office and clerical type stuff uh, billing and uh, reservations weddings all that stuff so now here's the double doors that I always refer to. Beyond the double doors, that little heater up there, and there's one down by the front door, are the only heat in the entire building that stays on all the time outside of the one I've got up in command. Um, but once we go through these double doors, there is no more heat in this building. So whatever the ambient temperature is outside, you gotta understand if we go through a cold spell, of minus degree days for any length of time, it's gonna to turn to minus degree temperatures inside this building beyond these doors. And that's what I fight when I come in here to do my investigations. All right. Um, this would have actually been one of the priest rooms. We call it the Jesus room because if you set Jesus in the chair over here, let's try it. What's that? Jesus. Hi, guys. How are you today? I know we all ask, what would Jesus do? Well, he'd sit there in a chair and be good until we come back. And the story goes that if you set him in the chair, he doesn't like the chair. So he'll crawl back up into bed. So we'll leave him there and see what happens. It's never happened before, but it's always fun. All right, so they have this set up as a uh, bride's room. So this is where the brides 
today would get dressed and and uh, put on their wedding dresses and such. And then over here, they had kind of a makeup room set up. And so originally the first floor was uh, reserved for the priest and abbots only. Okay, you saw me doing some sprying down in this mirror. We may do that again. That was kind of fun. Interesting. Um, head down the hallway here. We got a little phone booth there, but from back in the day. So, again, now here's the stairs. Stairs goes down into the basement. The creepy basement. Then you go down this little hallway here. And we'll do that in a second, but you'll end up in the uh, library or you can go up the stairs and to the second floor. That's a back door entry. Um, and then it goes into the library, as I said. Go over here. This is the uh, priest dining room. And we'll just glance in there real quick. Okay. Very cool. If you look over there, you see the... Uh, little double doors there we're directly above the kitchen downstairs so when we get down to the kitchen i'll show you the double doors down there and what those are are dumb waiters and that's how they would uh, send the meals up to the priest and abbots um, and then of course they would load their dirty dishes and and send it back down to the kitchen but that's what those are are the uh, old school dumb waiters that's what they call them so the the priests always dined alone out of respect to their rank and and their stature within the the uh, monastery here and the library originally was built as the cafeteria for the general pop population but after the second year they realized they really needed a library and so this switched over from being the dining room to the library. There's not much left of the library, the original library. Some of the old tables are still here. You look at these old butcher block type tables. They are original. They were part of the, the original library. There is a bookshelf there that's original to the building and the library. Over there was, was the librarian desk, original. Um, and then over here is the old Dewey Decimal System. So that's where you would look up and try to find whatever book you were trying to locate. Um, it's old school. This is end of the viewing room. <clears throat> so now you gotta see the, the viewing room in its entirety. Pretty cool, huh? A couple more don uh, donated organs. Not like an organ donation, but <laughs> physically a musical instrument organ donation. <laughs> Up there is my camera. Real happy with that one. It gives us a good view of everything that's here. So that should kind of look a little bit familiar to you because that's kind of what you're seeing in the IR camera there. So now you got a pretty good idea. It comes right out of the library there. Let's go on through here. We'll end up head towards the foyer. And this would have been the, the original front entry back when they were having services and mass, stuff like that. You would enter through this door here. And I guess I can open it up to see, give you an idea what it looks like. Ooh, there we go. So, and over there you can see the highway now. So occasionally we do hear the highway noise come over here. Um, that little car was, the closest one was actually here in the parking lot. Um, but yeah, that's Highway 50. So that's why we get the, the highway noise that we do. Um, there's the cornerstone. 
see something here. Ah, there. A lucky penny, I guess. And then over here is the uh, historical designation. All right, we'll head into the chapel now. Looking back down the hallway there. So we'll head into the chapel. There's the stained glass that you guys don't get to see. Um, there's my camera up there on the uh, balcony, along with a, that auxiliary IR light. We'll head up there in a minute. Um, so yeah, this is the chapel. Let me uh, show you the stained glass real quick. Very pretty. And that was actually put in, the building was completed in 1926, but this wasn't placed until 1930. It was donated by Simon P. and Mary Ann Smith, a brother and sister that had a lot to do with uh, the goings on here at the monastery in the very beginning. Over there is the doorway. You can't really see um, because the pews are in a way. It looks like the door's open too, which is unusual, but that's how the, uh, the priest or the abbot would make his grand entry during mass. He'd come in that door. We can go in or out either one of these doors. It's gonna end up in the same hallway. So let's just go out the one that's open. All right. Um, so let me just show you how we got here. There's, there's the priest dining room, okay. Here's the long hallway. This would have been the stairs that, right above the stairs here you'll see is where command center is, not too far off to the right. Or my other right, the left side. <laughs> so here is the uh, hallway into the sacristy. Now again, beyond these double doors here, women were not allowed for obvious reasons. Um, the sacristy was used kind of like the men's locker room. They would, the priest would have their robes and all their collars and all their stuff in there. Uh, they'd get dressed and undressed for mass. And then same thing with the choir boys and altar boys and whatever other were part of that service. So as we go down in here into the sacristy, you see <clears throat> that, um, yeah, they kind of have their own little lockers. Let me go ahead and flip on a light. What we're doing there, pretty lit up now. So um, yeah, each one of these cabinets, if you notice, they have a number, two, four, six. So they would have been kind of like lockers and assigned to um, the priest or the um, abbots or whoever was doing the service. And they would keep things like their, their collars and Bibles and that sort of thing uh, tucked away. Whatever they wanted to store into this room, they would. Uh, and the altar boy pole come back here and sometimes I, I know when I'm videoing at night you might see a reflection down here but if you notice there's two mirrors at the end here so that'll give you know sometimes give you an illusion something's moving when it's actually something back in behind us there so it's really not anything in the room other than say me or whoever's doing their investigation at the time so they'll, they'll create an illusion. There again, that's that breezeway that I showed you that goes over the top of the potato cellar. If you look right down there, those are the cellar doors. Halfway through the potato cellar, they, then you could open those up just like a cellar of an old house, only this is double wide. 
And that's how they would bring in the fruits and vegetables and stuff that they would harvest from their fields down into the potato cellar. And that's what, uh, that's what, uh, that is there, the cellar door, cellar entry. And then, see what this was used for was their robes and stuff like that. Um, so as you can see, there's still some here. Um, suit jackets, any $20 bills, that would be nice, huh? Find a 20 in one of these pockets. Payday! So yeah, wishful thinking, no payday today. But uh, okay, cool. You can see my IR camera right up underneath the uh, pipe up there. So that's how I view from command. Um, one thing I do want to point out while we're down here is something very interesting. I'm not Catholic. I don't know the rituals and whatnot. But I recently found out the uh, Pasina Basin here is what you see. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. Why don't you got that little tiny sink when you got a, a big sink there and then you got a mop sink there. It's kind of overkill on the sinks. So I looked it up and I'm trying to figure out what the heck it, it's about. Well, I found out that actually the Pasina, uh, Pasina was used for um, like, like if they were having mass or any kind of a, a ceremony or whatever, and they had wine that was blessed or water, holy water, and they wanted to pour it out. They wouldn't pour it down a conventional sink here because then it just drains into the sewer or septic or whatever, um, whatever system they have. Instead, if you look at this pipe, it, it's all silver and the silver goes all the way down into the, uh, into the, uh, the ground, straight into the ground. It doesn't go into any kind of cistern or anything like that. So it goes all the way down under the foundation and straight into the ground. And the idea is, is there, when they pour this holy water out or this, this uh, blessed wine, that they're blessing Mother Earth. I thought, well, that's pretty cool, you know? That's a neat little story. Something that I didn't know. So, believe it or not, there was something I didn't know. <laughs> All right, so we'll head on back down here. This would have been the abbot's bedroom. And if you look up there, you see the light. Now, on the top is red and on the bottom is green. I'll show you that here in a second. But you come back here. And while this is not original furniture, it is made up much like the room would have been. Um, pretty plain Jane, not a lot. Nothing personal on the walls. I, I smell a, a very strong smell of cherry pipe tobacco, which is not unusual. I think it's just impermeated into the wood. And when it's cold or moist or whatever and the wood's breathing, it emits the smell. But uh, at any rate... Um, so yeah, that is pretty plain Jane room. They didn't have family photographs or pictures of themselves or anything like that. It was all about the glory of God. And so it was religious type stuff, if they had anything on the walls at all. Uh, Abbott had his own uh, bathroom, a uh, nice bedroom. He had a nice little office area here. And you should recognize this photo if you're part of my oops, Simply Ghost page that's where I got that photo now the red and green lights that you see um, uh, they seem to be burned out but I bet you they're working outside let's see let's go out and see if I turned one on I don't see it nope okay they may have the electric turned off back here for whatever reason, who knows. Let's see. Just in case, I'll turn it back to the neutral. <coughs> this is a safe. We can only guess what they kept in here right now. Apparently there's a, a market for air conditioners. This is where maintenance keeps all his, his air conditioners. <laughs> so there's a lot of them. There we go file cabinets and it's pretty large in here <coughs> so your guess is as good as mine as to what what they kept in here 
No idea. Pretty cool. This is how the uh, abbot would make his grand entry for mass. He'd come through here. Because they have the pews in the way, we can't really walk through now. But you can see here, we end up in the chapel. All right, so we'll go up here, I guess, to the second floor. Via the balcony. So yeah, we're heading up here to the balcony area. Pretty steep steps. Show you here in a second. Very, very steep and very short too, very short steps. But now we're up on the balcony 